Good morning, YouTube friends. Welcome to today's video and welcome back to my kitchen. I feel like we're gonna be doing a lot of videos in the kitchen and a lot of cooking since we're still in lockdown. So I hope you guys have been enjoying all our series. For today, it's another watch and recreate series, but a little bit more special to my heart. We watched Coco. I've only seen that movie like twice. I saw it with Ruben, my fiance, when it came out and then I watched it with my family. And I try not to watch it too much because I ball like a baby every single time I hear remember me. So I try not to watch it. But this time we decided to watch it in honor of Cinco de Mayo coming up. I know it's Sunday that I'm posting today, so it's technically in two days. So a little bit early Cinco de Mayo celebration, but I still wanted to do something. And I know Coco has to do with Day of the Dead, El Dia de los Muertos, which is in November. But still, you can still see a lot of the Mexican heritage in the movie, so we wanted to try that today. I want to take a second and give a shout out to my abuelo from my dad's side, so my dad's dad. Um, I know they watch the videos religiously and obviously this is for all my family that are in Puerto Rico right now. I really hope I can see you guys soon as soon as this is done because I miss you guys a lot. But specifically for my abuelo, he's from Mexico. Um, he was born and raised there and he still has his Mexican accent which I love. He makes great Mexican food which I think is why it's one of my favorite foods ever like Mexican food and Latin food are number one for me I love it so much and he makes super yummy recipes he does like this taco de chicharrón homemade he makes um he's like fried jalapenos fried stuffed jalapenos which are great but spicy so they're really good um so I definitely want to dedicate this video to my abuelo happy cinco de mayo I hope you and abuela are doing good at home muchos besos para todos and I feel like this is going to be a very Spanglish video because ta-da, today we're making tamales! So it's in co the Coco film. Oh, you're a twig, mijo. Have some more. No, gracias. I asked if you would like more tamales. See? That's what I thought you said. And I remember when we went to Mexico about... It was, it's been over 10 years since we've been and seen the family over there, but... <laughs> I think my dad's gonna be watching this and he's gonna be like, oh my god, to my mom. He's gonna be like, oh my god, do you remember that one time when we went to um, Abuelo's sister's house and they made those tamales? Oh, best tamales ever. Did you say that? Did it happen? Let me know, mama. But yes, we went to my Abuelo's sister's house over in Mexico and they made us these tamales for breakfast. It was amazing. I'm gonna see if I can find pictures of it because I know since it was so long ago, it was on a really old camera and I think I lost some of the pictures but we went to Mexico, they made us this like breakfast feast and it was amazing so today in honor of Cinco de Mayo, in honor of my abuelo, in honor of our family in Mexico we're gonna be doing tamales so it's gonna be a little bit lengthy but it shouldn't be too crazy we're going to be making tamales that are filled with Carnitas, which is my favorite, basically pork, like shredded pork, and also chicken. So you could make the chicken homemade, but we kind of cheated a bit and we bought the Publix chicken because their rotisserie chicken is amazing, so we're just gonna shred that one up. But for the carnitas, we're gonna be making them homemade completely. We're gonna be making las masas de los tamales as well homemade, and we're gonna make some melotes, so I'm super excited. We, of course, are going to have a margarita at the end to eat all this together, so Thanks for joining me. I know this was a super long intro, but I just wanted to explain why I'm super excited for this and also low-key repping Mexican culture. So thanks for joining us. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let's get started. So for the first step, you're gonna take your corn husks and you're gonna put them in warm water. They're gonna be soaking for about 30 minutes. They do go over to the top, they float. So make sure to put something on top of it to kind of submerge it and just make sure they get soft after 30 minutes. So I actually got these from Amazon because given the quarantine, I didn't want to have to go over to the supermarket and then walk around trying to find them. So they came, a lot of them actually. This is the brand, not sponsored, but it was only $8 and Amazon Prime. So if you need corn husks in a jiffy, this is a good one. In the meantime, we're gonna start working on the masa. So in here we have six cups of masa harina two teaspoons of kosher salt, two teaspoons of ground cumin, and one teaspoon of baking powder. We're just gonna mix it all together. And now we're gonna add the 3 fourth cups of corn oil.
And now you're just going to mix the dough and you're going to gradually incorporate the either beef stock or chicken stock and you're basically going to use one whole thing of it and then half of the other one for it. So in the end, the dough is going to look like this and we're going to refrigerate for a little bit with a damp towel on top. For the carnitas, we're going to be using the pork shoulder or bistec de paleta de cerdo. We're going to cut it up into cubes and we're going to season it. We're going to be cooking our pork, or basically las carnitas, in the pressure cooker. We, You can season it to your liking. We just added about two teaspoons of minced garlic. We added some salt, pepper, thyme, cilantro. You can do it however you want. But basically, after you cover it up, you're going to do it in about medium heat. For It took about like 30 minutes. You just wait until the top part just starts steaming. And then you put a timer for 15 minutes, and that's when you wait for basically to finish cooking and then you open it up very carefully. When you open up that steamy goodness, it is going to smell amazing and it's going to take every bone in your body to control yourself to not eat it. And we basically just shredded it up, ate a couple pieces here and there, cause like, let's be real. Look at that face, it's good. <laughs> After you shred it up, we're gonna put it in the oven to broil for about 10 minutes, flip it, broil again, and it'll be crispy. So this is how it looks coming out. Overall, it looks a little bit crispy, but we didn't want to lose too much of the juiciness because it's amazing. Then Ruben made this sauce. What did you do again? Just grab the juices from the pork itself, a little bit of cornstarch, and like a gravy for it. And it's amazing, so it's going to keep it juicy and delicious as well. So like I said, we got the Publix chicken because we love it and we're cheaters. So we're just going to debone this now and get it ready. So we separated the chicken into two. We're gonna be using these two sauces. So I love the herde sauce, the salsa verde. We usually use it for the chilaquiles and they're delicious. But we're gonna do both of them first because Ruben likes the red one. Yes. Alrighty, now we're gonna make Benji sauce. Uh, my dad used to make this when we were younger. It's the perfect sauce that goes with anything from sandwiches to tamales. And the ingredients are. Mm. That's some good stuff right there. Ooh. I'm excited. Not a paid actor. <laughs> <laughs> now all the fillings are ready. You just have to prepare las hojas de los tamales. Basically, cut up a couple pieces in order to be able to make the ribbon and tie those little tamales all cute. And here we have our masa, it's looking good. And we have our hoja de los tamales, and then those little thingies for the ribbons. And first we're gonna start by assembling the chicken ones. So we split, as I said, <laughs> the two sauces into different containers. Basically, you're just gonna add la masa into the middle of la hoja, and then you're just gonna flatten it out as much as you can. You can totally see the difference. My hoja was a lot smaller than Ruben's, so Ruben was very doughy. So it looks a little bit bigger, mine's a little bit smaller, we are aware, but they came out great. You're just going to add chicken or whatever filling you're using to the middle of it, and I'm going to show you how to fold it in a second. Okay, actually in a couple seconds. So all you gotta do is fold it down the middle, like so, and then you're gonna grab the skinny part, which is the bottom of it, fold it inward, and then you're gonna tie it up beautifully like a little Christmas present in the morning, just to make sure that it holds it while it's steaming. And then your tamales are set. And now you do the exact same thing with the other filling that you have created. We did carnitas, so that's what we're doing now in incredibly quick speed. This is how they'll be looking at the end. And now it's time to steam them. And we're going to be using our little bamboo steamer that we used to make the bao buns. You just steam them for about 20 to 25 minutes. First batch of tamales was in there for about 25 minutes and we're gonna take them out now. Look at that steam coming out. All right, so right now we're gonna make the elote sauce to add to our feast. It's gonna be about half a cup of mayo. So it's gonna be pretty much this whole thing here. So the rest of it's kind of however you want to. Everything is to your tasting and to your liking. So we're gonna add a little bit of lemon juice, 
some tahini, a little bit of paprika, salt, and Parmesan cheese in the sauce, and as well on top of it. Again, it's to your liking, so I'll just show you kind of what I'm gonna do. I have a pinch of salt. Paprika. I like this a lot, so I'm gonna add a little extra to it. Lemon juice to give it some zest. And then Parmesan cheese. About that much, because I'm gonna add more later in the mix. Then bake these at 350 degrees for about 10 to 15 minutes. So we're here. <laughs> Taste test time. So we have the chicken ones, yep. the elotes, the pork yep. one, and then we made margaritas. So cheers, baby. Cheers, baby. Let's try them out. Oops, I forgot to drink. We needed that after that whole oh ordeal. Gosh. I know. It was fun, but it got hot in the <sighs> kitchen and we were sweating. It got hot. The AC is like 67 now and I'm so still sweating. <laughs> so. Switching these over. Yes. Because we got an ugly one. I'm switching to another plate. So some of them suffered. This one is still in pristine residence. Still looking cute, still has the wrap around, but there's others that suffered in the process. Yeah, a few this is an example. Yeah, a few casualties. We're looking for the flavor though. Exactly. I mean some of our hojas were like a little bit bigger and some were a lot smaller. So that's why the tamales are very ranging in size. But let's see. But I will say, for our first time ever making tamales, I'm proud of it. Oh my gosh, I'm super proud of you, good. But I don't know what the hell I'm doing. So behind the scenes, that's why I keep reaching over. We have like cheese and the sour cream to put on the top. But we cleared it out to take a chip from there. And now that's done, it's time to eat. Yep. We have the secret Benji sauce Benji. here. You're telling why it's called Benji sauce? So, my best friends, my dad used to make the sauce, my well, my parents. And we would always take it out anywhere we go for a cookout or whatnot. And so all my best friends, since my dad's name is Benjamin, called it Benji sauce. So I kept it in. Yep. We've made it ever since already. Going First. apple tea. Yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and put it on the side. Oh my god, I'm gonna cry. This is really good. Why are you gonna cry? It feels, it feels, it tastes so good. It tastes funny? <gasps> I was telling Ruben, I don't know if my parents remember, but. Alexa, how dare you? Please stop. Thanks. Um, for my birthday, every time we would have like a party at home with my family, they would always ask me what I wanted for the menu and I always said Mexican food. So that's why I want to cry because it makes me think of my birthday and my family. <laughs> Man, it's good. This is the chicken one. Yep, How's the pork one? Pork is really good. Mm -hmm. Really moist. Oh, mm. just the spot. So, off camera, we were talking that Ruben doesn't like doughy stuff. Mm -hmm. So, if it's too doughy, it's like overpowering the mm -hmm. meat, kind of. So, what's your thought of this? Is it too Perfect. doughy? That Perfect. one's a little crazy, so it might be a little bit too doughy. No? Perfect. Mmm, yay. -hmm. Yeah. No, we have tamales for days. Mm -hmm. So my lipstick somehow lasted the whole day. Now yeah. you're gonna see it smear all over my face when I eat this elote, so... Yeah. You're in for a treat. I'm gonna try this. Oh, look at that beauty. You smell it? Mm. Mm -hmm. Alright. Good. That Parmesan cheese! I don't even want to see myself. That's why, <laughs> that's why I'm moving I know, in. I made eye contact with myself. I was like, Ugh. This is the best day ever. Mm -hmm. All of the flavors blend perfectly, but definitely that Parmesan cheese is coming through. True and true. Oh my god, there's more sauce! Mm -hmm. <laughs> I knew this was going on. Hey, oh my god, it's worse than I thought. Okay, this is the best. 
this pork one. Look how pretty it is. Yes, it's a weird shape, but I mean, just like the fact that it stayed completely closed. Yep. I thought I was about to drop it. I'm like, no! Serial <laughs> colmo. I still haven't even put cheese on mine because I it feel like it's perfect with just it, yep. the sauce and the sour cream. I could put sour cream on everything. <laughs> well, want me to get it? No, it's okay. It's too late. I'm in too deep. I should have started with the chicken. You should have. You see why? Oh my god. You see why? I feel like that's in Ratatouille where I got chicken to the past. Mm -hmm. Wow. Mm -hmm. Chicken was still really good. Mm -hmm. Starting with the pork. Mm. Yeah, I can see why. That's too good. But let's wrap it up while we eat. Save them from some ugliness. Mm -hmm. First of all, margarita. Great, mm -hmm. as always. So good. Elote is amazing. Honestly, they don't even take that long to make. Mm -hmm. So super easy. Want to spice it up a little bit? Do it. Tamales, a I'm journey. Going. It was yeah, everything started out really easy. Like when we're doing the masa, I'm like, yeah. okay, we got the ball rolling, yep. and then having to steam them for 20 minutes each. It takes took so. us a while. I can see why people sell them at a high price. Yep, we could sell them. Okay. We got extra. <laughs> nah, I'm gonna eat them all. You want tamales? <laughs> I like this a lot. It's good. I know we're definitely gonna do this again. Mm -hmm. Carnitas. Is the way to go. Yep. Is the way to go. We like chicken, but I definitely, I've always been a carnitas girl, so. Yeah. The chicken was definitely interesting. It still tasted really good. Mm-hmm. And it's public so it tastes yeah. like chicken. Like, you can't, can't go, go wrong. wrong. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll eat that one. It was one. good. <laughs> it was good. Yep. Yeah. So, I really enjoyed it. I get the meat sweats. I've been sweating since we started. Oh ah. yes. Happy Cinco de Mayo, people. Happy Cinco. Cheers. Cheers. Salud. Thank Thanks for guys. joining us. And we'll see you in the next one. Bye. Peace. Now we're going to add six. Just kidding. And now we're going to add three-fourths. Three, four, three. <laughs> okay, but I did. But I don't want to What are you smelling, Leo? He's going straight to the source. What is it? You want chili? Oh. You want? You want? You want a chili? Don't do it! Don't do it, good boy! Wow. <laughs>